This season of Chef on Chef, we're giving homegrown Malaysian produce the limelight it deserves. Cheers. 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 Nice salty. Salty. Chef on Chef season five. Homegrown. In this episode, we visit a one-of-a-kind operation. The country's first and only sturgeon farm that produces high-quality Malaysian caviar. My name is Sean and I'm one of the uh, people who work here with uh, Baolai International. I serve as the Chief Marketing Officer here. As most of you know, we are the only guys who do local caviar here in Malaysia. One thing that we discovered as you rare sturgeons in a tropical climate is that they don't have the need to hibernate any longer. That actually ensures that we get uh, caviar way faster and sometimes even better quality than most other places because we can actually burn off the fat and everything. Hey guys, welcome Hi. to Telo Caviar's uh, farm. So this is where most of the magic happens. So I'm going to just take you around very quickly. Our star chef for the day is Chef Yu Cheng. I'm uh, YC from Above Gastrova. My thoughts on caviar, I think it's a great product. I mean, if everyone's going to pay that much for it, it has to have its merits. Today, I'm expecting to see the whole process of how uh, the sturgeons are being farmed, how they're being taken care of, so that when I serve it on a plate, it's with full understanding of where this thing comes from and hopefully to convey the story yeah, in the dish. And his novice partner is Rubini. Hi, I'm Rubini. I am a model, an actress, and a content creator. My very first try of caviar reminds me of the ocean. It's not like a loaf at the first sight. The more you eat it, you truly understand the taste of it. And I just want to know how in tropical weather we can have a caviar farm. I'm just really intrigued with it. This here will be the sturgeon that we're actually going to cut up for today, right? Um, this oh is God, a no! rather young one. That's a and young one? Yeah, it's actually quite young. It's about three years old. Uh, yeah. So usually, wow. if, you, you, if you're in any other country, to get uh -huh. it to this size will take you about five years or so. Uh huh, here? Right? Yeah, but here in Malaysia, because uh, one thing we don't have is winter. Yeah. So none of our fish actually hibernate. Uh, they grow really quick. Oh, I see. Right? And as we move away from here, so this Ooh. is basically how far we've come yeah. along. Over there, you can see every single sturgeon in there wow. is as much as a Ferrari. This is the tank that's been with us since the beginning of the farm. The first one? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. oh wow! Uh, the fish in there is about 120 kilos at least. It's huge! Yeah. Well, I've never seen such big surgeon in my life before. First of all, I've never been to even fishing. So this is like my closest encounter to a live fish. Welcome to the processing plant. What happens here is we will deblood it and then we will actually take the entire fish and put it through the window over there where we will perform a cesarean right? oh. and we will extract the eggs very quickly. Once the sturgeon eggs are extracted, cleaned and separated, the final step before packaging is salting. We have a few different types of salt which we're going to let you choose in a short while and see which ones you want to try. Test the different flavours. Yeah. yeah, you grip your hand like a fist. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. 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 So you can see the intensity of the flavour has... Yeah. It's, it's a lot Increase. more different from what yeah. it was. Yes. Yeah. So sea salt is one of our preferred salts to mm. use due yeah. to low acidity. Malaysian products often gets a very bad rap. People think that you know, whatever comes from France, whatever comes from Italy, you know, inherently is far superior in quality to what you'd have in Malaysia. But, you know, I've had experiences with other produce from Malaysia. Of course, they have to be done meticulously planned and executed for it to be good. And I think you know, Talor Caviar is a perfect example. So this will be the bamboo, yeah. So this is one of my personal favourites. Okay. Yeah. Mmm. Oh. Okay, this is good. This is good. good. This is good. <laughs> wow, so different. Yeah, it's yeah. it's so different than yeah, the dimension. Yeah, it's just. A, yes, yes. Yeah. You know, being in a tropical country, 
I'd never assumed that we can have caviar here. So the innovation that they have created for the fish uh, to adapt into the weather here, to the temperature, it was amazing. A product like this, we want to make it something that is, uh, we are very proud of here in Malaysia and can spread as this is something original that we've done. I am looking forward to his menu for what, what he's going to do with our product. Well, caviar is probably one of the most expensive things in the world. And to a lot of people, they don't want to mess with it too much. But for me, I think I take it as a challenge. I want to push the boundaries. You know, since we are having caviar in Malaysia, I think Malaysian food, Malaysian flavours is the perfect way to, for us to express it. We leave Tanjung Malem with our caviar and head to Ipo, where the above gastro bar kitchen is being prepared to cook something special. Above gastro bar is Roja, to put it short. It is whatever inspires me, whatever I just feel like doing when I wake up in the middle of the night from a dream. And it's that pursuit of always of something new, something that would push the boundaries, but at the same time keeping its roots in Malaysia. All right. Uh, we just got back from the caviar farm mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, it has been very inspiring to say the least. So, Bastian, you are guest today yeah. and uh, you are representing Martel. So I, I would do. like to hear how we're going to pair the drinks with the dishes. So I'm Bastian, I'm the brand ambassador for Martel here in Malaysia. So we're going to start with the Cordon Bleu. So the Cordon Bleu is the iconic blend of Maison Martel. Mm -hmm. Please try first, let me know what you think about it and if it kind of link in your mind with the dishes you had. Okay? Okay. Let's I try this. You, in French we say santé, we don't say cheers, so okay. santé guys. Santé, santé. Yeah. Mm. Oh man, it's so smooth. Very smooth, very, right? It's very fruity. Very fruity, exactly. Almost just disappears. On yeah. The yeah. It goes it's so very well balanced the too. It's yeah. indeed very balanced. Very you have nice. this fruitiness, but you also have this sweet woodiness coming behind. So it really helps to elevate the whole blend together. Very balanced, so it can go with a lot of dishes actually. Mm -hmm. The second one is the Martel XO. In this one, we're trying to express a lot more woodiness, uh, a lot more spiciness. It's stronger kind of cognac. You can already feel way more powerness just yeah, on the first it, nose. It, it feels it's stronger. heavier. Stronger. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Really heavier. Yes. It's got more weight to it. Wow. Very expressive. It's more, wow. it's more body, it's creamier in a way. A little bit, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Texture-wise, it's very different and very expressful. It's very spicy. A bit spicy, yeah. yeah a bit yeah. spicy. With the spicy purple. Yeah, exactly. You are talking about Chinese food with the XO yeah. sauce. Okay. XO with XO. XO with XO. Just makes sense. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Yeah, I think it was made for it. I'm really looking forward to see how they're going to propose something different, but along the same line using the Martel. Their style of interpreting the Ipo culture with the Martel. With caviar on his mind and Martel on his palate, Chef YC has a clear picture of the menu. What he's less clear on is if Rubini is up to the task. Hi, Rubini. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you for having me. Yeah, how are you feeling? Excited, okay. but you know, a little nervous too. Well, this is definitely my first time in a professional kitchen. What I'm looking forward to is just to learn, you know, and to enjoy my session with the chef. But yeah, as long as I don't get kicked out today. We'll see how it goes. I think uh, at the end of it, again, uh, we'll be having fun. For our first dish, it's an appetizer. We're gonna start with a blini. Are you familiar with what a blini is? Not really. So it's a mini pancake kabushi people. Oh. Put caviar on top. So it's perfectly yeah. for me. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is gonna start you off easy. Okay. All right, so to start, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. We just put the batter somewhere in the middle where it's uh, just nice, not too hot, not too cold. Okay. When it gets to about a certain size, just stop. And here we wait until uh -huh. it forms a perfectly nice crust at the bottom. Okay. And then we can flip it. Let's do this. Okay, make sure your thing is straight. 
bit more, bit more, and stop. Okay. And we let it go. Yeah, again. Yeah, go a bit lower. Yeah, okay. I came Shall twice. We, yeah, go under. And flip. Oh. I got it. Perfect. <laughs> For me, I think maybe because of the temperature. Yes. Perfect. This wow. Is. So should I flip this one? Um, yeah, oh. I think that one's gone. Oh, that one's gone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, but this one's beautiful. Yeah, let's move it over to the board. Uh, just place it here. Yes. Just shimmy it down. Yeah. And wow, looks better than mine. <laughs> oh my okay. god. So over here, yeah. we have uh, calamansi oh, mayo. Good. So we're just gonna pipe a bit on top. So it's just to give it a bit of moisture. And then over here we have the shredded duck. Yeah, the, the pulled duck, as, as we call it. Let's try to make it balance. I think uh -huh. with something like caviar, it's so delicate, you want to balance just the right amount. Okay. So try to keep it nice. Yeah. All right. And we have the Kaluga Amor, so it's uh -huh. a hybrid between two. Okay. So I find that this one has a very clean flavor. It's, okay. it's very pristine. You can taste the sort of sea flavor in it. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to take it. It's a bit of this because, uh, yeah, it packs a real punch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Put it on top. Ah. Beautiful. All right. And just so that it's a bit more beautiful. Garnish it. Oh, it's beautiful. Voila. Voila. All right. <laughs> it's my turn to try. It's your turn. Okay. Go at one, at one angle, fix it, and point it there. Don't move it around. Okay, yeah. and then and just then pull then it up, is it? No, just, just let go. Let it be. Yes, just let it be. Ah! Oh. Oopsie. So sorry. Ta -da. So, sorry, boss. Yeah. Yeah, go lower, go lower. Don't be afraid to go low, okay? Yeah, try not to move, just press. Just like this. Yeah, yeah, go lower. Yeah. Look at mine. Thank you. Thank you. I had fun. Cheers. Cheers. So good. It's Who so says good. Caviar can't be Malaysian. Who we'll say? It is so good. For the second dish, Chef YC brings out a decadent partner for the caviar, lobster. So you just boil it? Like yeah, for bake few... it and yeah, just try to get the edges as well. Yeah, okay. that's, that's important as well. Okay, alright, I think we're good. And now, it's the fun part. We're going to take it out to our charcoal grill outside. You want to put the lobster on uh -huh. and every 10 seconds or so, just give it a quick flip. Just a flip? Yep. Beau Blanc for the lobster. Mm. There's like chili there. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Two kinds of chili. There is dried chili in the Nam Pao, which is a Thai chili paste. And the other one is a lacto fermented chili. So that's what gives it that acid and a bit of that that's chili. So good. All right, we shall begin the plating process. Okay. I shall let you do the honors. I am on it. Okay. Is it good? Please? Yes. All right. Just slide it out. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. And now we have our vegetable. Add generously. Mindfully. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you when to stop. All right. I think that's, okay. that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. Just stir it around okay. gently. And just in between. Yes, in between. Yeah, just let it flow gently. Put the orange one, put, flip it over, put it in between. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. I think the best part is working with himself. Like, I'm small town girl who has only cook at home. So the whole experience being in a professional kitchen was amazing. And the fact that I went with the thought that I'm going get grilled by him, but he was such an amazing teacher, and I just love his life. Bit of a sauce. Mm. 
How do you like it? So good. Do you think our guests will be happy? Very happy. Yep. Oh, so remember so the taste, remember the texture, and the next time you're going to be the one cooking. Entirely? Oh my god. Okay. All right. It's time for dinner and some familiar faces have arrived to taste and judge Chef YC and Rubini's offerings. Hi everyone, this is Chef Yong. Uh, this is Chef Lee. Uh, we are from Eat and Cook Restaurant. Our main job today is uh, travel down to uh, above Gastro Bar to try out the um, special pairings from Chef YC mm -hmm. uh, that created with the caviar and the martel. Yeah. So we are very excited to see how was the thing been designed and into our plate. I don't know if I expect anything, but I know that the standard is pretty high already. Oh, oh already? already. Nice. Hello. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Chef. Yeah. Hi, Chef. Yeah, welcome to Above Gastro Bar. Thank you very much. I hope you're hungry and ready to taste. Yeah, yes. looking forward, actually. So, first of all, we have a blini, which is a very common application for caviar. Mm -hmm. But this one, a blini, is done with a bit of a Malaysian twist on it. So, it's ginger, galangal, lemongrass. Perfect. Infused in the butter for mm -hmm. half an hour. And it has a currency mayonnaise. Okay. Yeah, and then the pulled duck, it's very simple. We try to keep it as clean as possible to mm -hmm. bring out the flavor of the caviar. So this is just done with uh, Indian long pepper mm. and okay. lemongrass. Okay. Please enjoy. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You. Thank I you. Hope you will catch uh, the bit of Martel BSOP that I added onto the riet as a finish. Okay, inside the riet, nice, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you later, guys. chef. You want to try to eat it like one bite or? Yeah, I think we can go that like one bite. Mm. Mm. That calamansi mayo balance. Yeah, it's really yeah. balanced. That's exactly it. You have. Yeah, it helps to bring that the mm -hmm. All the layers yeah. are really defined. You have the richness of the cream, then the mm -hmm. caviar is just the yeah, just just balancing it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you mind the flavors like the Chinese infused cooking herbs inside as well? Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the blinis is not too heavy. Yeah. It just disappears. It was a very traditional way on uh, topping up blinis and caviar. But the uh, personal touch on the uh, daki daki, which is the coffee duck, I guess, of uh, braising some herbaceous uh, with the duck meat, was uh, well padding. Um, it actually complements each other. Uh, it brings up duck at the same time as it brings up spot on the umami. Just starting to mm -hmm. open up everything. Open up pellets and we are ready for this. Already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed you guys are quite hungry. Huh? Um. Great food is always a combination of creativity, innovation, and good ingredients. Perfect. Ooh, that's wow. beautiful. I think Thank you. So, right. here we are presenting a different caviar. This is the Amor Kaluga hybrid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it's a lot creamier. The lobster has been poached and then we butter poach it again and then it goes on the charcoal very hot. While we were basting it with butter, we also flambéed it with Martel XO. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, wow. I hope you can smell that. You have a little touch of mm. Martel coming, yes. with sweet spiciness here yeah. and there. On the lobster yeah. itself. Yeah. On the lobster, yeah. The beurre blanc that you see there is not the color of a normal beurre blanc. Mm -hmm. Because this is an XO beurre blanc. It's not XO martel, it's the Chinese food XO sauce. So with a dried scallop, but we go non traditional with this one. So this one, I think it carries, it's gentle enough to sort of coax the caviar in. On the side, another Chinese thing stir fry with vegetable. It's hikama or sengkuang that's raw, and then snow peas, we just plunged in salted water and it's tossed in a calamansi vinegar and on top is what we call bei feng tong or it's a uh, yeah it's it's a very hong kong dish so it's garlic and breadcrumb deep fried to give some texture and some brightness to the dish 
All right. All right. You make me even more hungry than I was. That's <laughs> All perfect. <right. laughs> please, please enjoy. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes. One quick question. Yep. When we ate last time, yeah. remember, we had a little spray of Martel that really helps to bring everything together. I heard that you might have followed this idea. Wait a minute. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I was ready for it. Perfect. There you go. All right. Thank you very Please much. Enjoy and tell me what you think about it. Bon appétit, monsieur. Bon appétit. Oof. Just tender, beautiful. Very nice flavor. Mm. Yeah, it's very smooth. This very creamy kind mm. of. Mm -hmm. And the caviar really integrates itself in this creaminess. Indeed, yeah. it's a bit creamier caviar indeed. Yeah, they make the, the whole blue blanc more elegant. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Especially when you get the little pops. Mm. Mm -hmm. Of that umami sauce was like bursting out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The caviar really helps to elevate the, the beurre blanc to something mm -hmm. a bit more deeper in terms of flavor. It's really nice, but I do believe that that will be better. Every yeah. good inspired Martel inspired dish is better with, <laughs> with a bit more of Martel. Yeah, I agree. Generous. Here you go, dear. I quite enjoy the, the, the layering in my mouth. Feel the texture that, that brings out crispy, yeah. tender, soft, a little bit sting of caramel. Yeah, the crunch, the crunch. Yeah, it's very yeah. well. Yeah, texture wise, it's really nice. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. That's so simple, but just it brings even more coherence to the flavors. Each element of the dish brings up different flavors from the cognac. Mm -hmm. You have exactly the charred grill flavors that yeah. go with the woodiness. Yeah. But you have the caviar that also goes with this freshness somehow. It bursts up the umami. It, help, it really helps on the sauce. Yeah. Both the XO with the lobster, you have this charkiness from the lobster that goes really well with the XO. But I was afraid, since XO is pretty powerful, that it will overpower since lobster is very delicate. But actually, this beurre blanc he did was very thick and very mouse filling, so just works really well. The martels go with the dishes that we have today. Definitely, yes. As usual, we always love martel to come with umami, salty, because when you get in touch with the saltiness, it's actually elevated the sweetness from the umami. So you taste the balancing between everything. Hello, I should have guys. Yeah. Hello, Thank guys. you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so coming. much for the journey. You can feel the passion. Yeah. And it's really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah. enjoying the journey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. cheers. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So nice. Okay. okay. I really like the fact that he uses the French technique he knows with the French cognac to elevate the Malaysian flavors. It really was a journey all together. I didn't really saw it like one dish, one dish, one dish. Uh, there really is a link in between. You can really see his style of cooking. I think it's not very easy to like, set up a restaurant Ipo, especially serving this kind of cuisine, very more focusing on Asians, Malaysian. So Chef YC definitely put a lot of efforts for the restaurants together with Han. So we need more talents to come back to Malaysia, do something great. To be honest, a lot of time people, you know, have different perspective with fine dining. You know, they really don't understand how much workmanship has been going on at the back, even for me. And to know that the amount of time is taken to just prepare one meal, I was just shocked. And to be in the kitchen and preparing the entire dish, it makes sense. It is such an upscale experience and people need to understand that. For an upscale experience, everything needs to be taken on a different level. And I want the viewers to see that, that everything was prepared with heart. And when they serve you, they want you to enjoy, enjoy that experience. So I want the viewers to see that. Today is a showcase of how Malaysian produce brings 
something new to the table. I mean, I totally enjoyed myself. Uh, it's not every day that I get to visit a caviar farm and cook with caviar, come up with dishes on the same day and having, you know, cognac, different kinds of cognac to pair with. I think this has been an extremely fulfilling day. And thanks to some passionate Malaysians willing to soar beyond the expected, chefs like YC don't have to travel too far to get their hands on exotic ingredients, now grown closer to home. Chef on Chef is brought to you by Martel. Soar beyond the expected.